So we're talking about novelist Pat Conroy, who wrote The Water is Wide, a devastating, often hilarious account of a year fighting dim-witted education bureaucrats while trying to teach impoverished school children living on an island off the South Carolina coast. Novelist Pat Conroy makes this point painfully clear. When Conroy first met with the children, he found that they had been taught next to nothing. Their expectations of life were bleak and their notions of themselves worse. The school system had given up on them. He discovered by the end of the first day of teaching that many of his students could not recite the alphabet. Most of the students thought John F. Kennedy was the first president of the United States, and two children did not know how old he, they were. So, learning was not, was not only not fun, it was at best drudgery. It also came with humiliation. It seemed impossible to instill joy in such forgotten children. Conroy was saved by his own enthusiasm for life and an emerging belief that a pep rally method of education might work. He could transfuse his energies into his students. All right, young cats, he told his young students. We are about to embark on a journey of knowledge. Their journey was led by a wildly enthusiastic young teacher who believed that learning could be fun, that life was good, but it was hard. We would prepare to meet it head on, but we would enjoy the preparation. He used everything he could find to cast a spell, pique curiosity, and encourage exploration. They listened to music, went to the theater, watched films. They took field trips and talked about witches. They danced, they sang. They were going to have more 24-karat fun than any group in the long history of mankind. His expansiveness pushed them not only onward, but upward. He railed against the philosophy of his predecessor, which was, keep them busy, we're not here to have fun, we're here to educate. What was perhaps of most lasting value Conroy tried to give his sense of the glory of their own island to observe and learn the natural beauties of the plants and sea animals. He failed to do much of what he set out to do, but perhaps this is the inevitable shooting for the moon. But a teacher need not do all that may first seem essential. If he is exuberant, some of the joy will stick. If optimistic, some of the hope will linger. If delighting in the adventure of life, a bit of that excitement will obtain.